welcome back to Project Seawolf. We're back on the boat today. Uh, gonna tear out the rest of everything that's in there. I think it's just the cushions left. And uh, getting rid of this anchor chain. It's like black with rust down there. And uh, it's leaving a huge mess everywhere. So I'm just, I, who knows what size the next uh, windlass is gonna be. It's not gonna be that windlass. And get another windlass. All right, so all the cushions are out. It's like, it's like 10 to 15 cushions, <laughs> or at least, at least 10 cushions. Um, that's what the boat looks like without the cushions in there. Not as inviting, not nearly as inviting, <laughs> but I can see everything. I can get into everything. I discovered a few things like the autopilot control switch. So this is funky. Um, yeah manual automatic and change course left and right gee whiz lots of storage still need to dig this out because i think one of the rules i want to have is to be able to see all the chain plates anytime i want um so i don't have to like dig around the inside of the boat to find the chain plates they'll just be there and ready to work on because I, I, I don't know, it's a safety thing. You should always know the condition of your chain plates. And uh, right now, the condition of the chain plates are bad, so. Moving all the cushions out of the way is gonna help me get everything vacuum cleaned up and uh, also store the cushions in a place that mildew's not gonna grow on them. All right, let's see what the, uh, let's see what the anchor left. Or the, uh, ooh, the chain. Yeah, a pile of rust. That's gonna be very satisfying <laughs> to vacuum. Um, that That's the chain plate for the bob state, which needs to be uh, worked on. Um, I kind of went on a tangent <laughs> and figured out how much it would re-rig, but it would be to re-rig the entire boat. Okay, I spent pretty much the entire day vacuuming. Um, now I'm gonna be going through the boat and talking about uh, all the stuff that I would like to replace. Um, starting with the most important stuff, uh, eh, the stuff that's below the water line, the stuff that I need to get done before it goes back in the water. So uh, let's go at it. Obviously stuff that is below the water line includes the through holes. So check that one out. Uh, it's pretty crazy, and uh, that uh, bearing uh, for the prop shaft. Um, I mean, I could go through and show you all of the through holes. There's one here with just a cap on it. Uh, looks pretty corroded. And then there's this one that doesn't have a valve, and this one as well that looks really shoddy. Um, all in all, I think I counted like nine to yeah about there's, there's about 10 ish through hauls on the boat which is way too many and that's that's too many points of failure every sink every everything at, at any time they needed a new through a new salt water intake they, they just drilled a new hole in the hull and uh, that's super sketchy so uh, a lot of those through hauls are going to come out and i'm going to replace them with um well Actually, I'm gonna fill most of them um, and uh, replace the ones that I do need to keep with uh, composite, uh, like uh, Marlin or um, or the other one that uh, Sailing Oma uses. Now, looking at the engine here, you can see that there's tons of oil on the outside and in the bilge, there was also just lots and lots of oil. Um, I think this is the original engine and, or, at least it's it's very old and it's it's just corroded all over because of uh seawater has been getting in um and dripping on everything and uh everything's just falling apart so um before i invest in uh getting everything all or trying to get it all serviced and stuff um i think i'm just better off getting a brand new 
40 horse inboard engine. Uh, I was looking at the Beta Marines and uh, there's one for 40 or 4600 $4,600. Uh, so yeah, new engine, new through holes. If you've been following me for a while, you know that I have a history with, uh, <laughs> with toilets, uh, and thinking back to Paul's though and that, um, leak. So I think I'm just going to get rid of, uh, flushing toilets as, as nice as they are. Um, I don't think I really need them out at sea. I, I think I'm going to go with composting toilet and, uh, that'll eliminate the holding tank and, um, and the through holes required for it. So, um, so yeah, that'll cut down a lot of stuff. And, uh, I'm thinking about just, cause right now I think it only has like 30, 15 to 30 gallons of fresh water. Um, so turning all this space into more of a freshwater tank setup, uh, for offshore cruising for months at a time, um, I'm going to convert to that. So more capacity. So those are the, the things that will, um, that I'll, I'll need to think about before putting her back in the water is just the new engine and, uh, new through hulls and prop shaft and everything around the prop shaft. So cutlass bearings and, um, uh, prop, uh, dripless and, um, probably the prop itself and, uh, looking at and, and filling the through holes and only having as many through holes as I absolutely need. Just thinking about it from an engineering perspective, the less moving parts, the better. So the less holes, the better, the less things that can sink the boat, the better. Not really essential, but uh, good to do before you put back in the water. I'd, I'd want to repaint the bottom. Um, I'm thinking uh, light blue or dark blue, one of those two. Uh, I've heard light blue is easier to clean while you're underwater because you can't really see dark colors. Oh yeah, uh, chain plates before it goes back in the water. So um, I need to replace the bobstay and um, all of the chain plates, everything. Look, look, there's like a, I don't know if you can see it, but there's a, there's a bump there. There's bumps and deformities on both sides, except uh, it's a little bit more on this side around, yeah, up, up there and over there. Just really bad signs, so I'm gonna have to knock that out and knock that off and um, probably take down the mast. And uh, that's gonna be, I mean, it doesn't have to happen before I put it back in the water, but um, it, it would probably be a lot easier to re-rig the boat while it's out of the water. Um, maybe. The prop itself isn't too bad. I'm sure this would all just sand off. Um, I haven't really inspected behind the paint on this, but I assume the worst. And um, judging by how much it all drips, um, it'd probably be better off just replacing a lot of that. Now some other boat projects that uh, I plan on doing, hopefully before I put it back in the water, but if it takes too long, then um, I'm probably going to launch before I get those done. But uh, some of my other projects include uh, fixing the steering. Um, it's got, I don't know, the wires are just too loose. Um, probably, def I mean, definitely want to do that before I start cruising. Um, replace all the shrouds with uh, DM20 Dyneema, uh, which has like no creep whatsoever and lasts three times longer, than, at least three times longer than the steel and you can carry a whole roll of it. It doesn't really weigh that much. Um, and you can re-rig the boat anywhere in the world underway if you break something. So um, even, I'm even thinking of the DM20 Dyneema Forest Day and getting rid of furlers uh, because furlers can be a, a huge point of failure off of uh, offshore and um, even though I'm single-handing and it would be a huge pain to hoist all the sails all the time, um, I think it, it, it'd be worth it for the uh, for the cost savings of Dyneema and how much longer it would last than steel and um, all the other stuff that has to do with furlers as well. So uh, it, it, it would just be a little bit more raw of an experience. Maybe I'll invest in uh, electric uh, winches to bring up the uh, soft shackle hank-ons um, 
Yeah, but I'm I'm leaning up really towards Dyneema because I am sailing on a on a budget, <laughs> and uh, I would much rather prefer to be able to re-rig my boat anytime, anywhere. And you can only really do that with Dyneema uh, if you if you if you brought enough of it. Another thing is the uh, kitchen area. I just get rid of this whole diesel thing. Um, a lot of other sailors are using uh, alcohol stoves uh, gimbaled on top and then just maybe putting a uh, microwave in this area with the more robust electrical system. It should be fine, should, um, especially, if, uh, especially if I put in a bunch of solar panels in the back and uh, possibly, possibly a wind generator, but those things can be really loud. Speaking of the back, uh, now that there's no life pod here, and uh, I mean, these davits aren't gonna be doing anything because I'm gonna have the dinghy somewhere else and inflatable. Um, this whole back area, I'm gonna put a, uh, I, I don't know if you've seen them, but they're like uh, these big chrome aluminum apparatuses <laughs> that have the uh, radar dome and, uh, and antennas. And uh, a lot of times also the solar panels. So um, that will, bring it up and out of the way it'll be a nice attachment point for any like bimini above the uh above the wheel here um and uh it won't get in the way of the wind vane which will be on the back steering most of the time this old windlass has got to go i think it you fill it up with oil through here or something and i don't know it's just not reliable and um yeah i'd, I'd rather have uh a more modern uh, windlass with the, with the winch on top. So that's another thing that needs to be replaced as well as the chain that goes with it. So uh, whatever uh, model I choose, that'll dictate what size the chain is. I plan on getting a, uh, a, a 55, uh, no, a large Rockna for um, the main uh, anchor. And then also a much larger folding mantis anchor uh, that you put together uh, if you have to anchor in a storm. Um, thinking back to Sailing Uma surviving the hurricane way back when they first started making videos. Yeah, I was, I was super impressed with that idea and uh, I'm all for it. Now for offshore travel, I'm, I'm thinking of offshore navigation. So um, I'm thinking of getting a Simrad uh, navigation, kind of building out or, or in setting. Um, uh, the navigation screen there and um, also replacing the depth sounder with something that will work with the Simrad and getting a standard horizon um, AIS system uh, that both transmits and receives uh, which will also talk to the navigation tablet so or not navigation screen Simrad uh, that will come with its own radar dim dome so um, if if that spot for the radar dome doesn't work with the um, inner force day, then uh, I will put it on the uh, the back chrome davit area. Uh, I, if I can, I don't know if, uh, if radar works with that well. Um, I don't know, something needs to be done so that this thing's a cutter rig again. <laughs> I, either it's gonna go up there or in the back. Uh, a little further down the road for uh, blue water cruising, definitely want a, a desalinator, so source of fresh water out in the ocean, and and the wind vane. And those uh, can be a bit pricey, but I have a few years before I need to get those. Right now, I just need to focus on the projects that are below the waterline, like the uh, engine, uh, cutlass bearings, and prop shaft, and uh, through hulls, and the paint. Um, and I'm not allowed to sand or grind in this in this dry dock area, so I think I have to hire somebody to take the boat to the shop and <laughs> grind it all out there. Um, maybe when that happens, I'll also take down the mast so I can start re-rigging things. Because, um, uh, yeah, I need to start filling through holes and um, figuring out which through holes I'm gonna need in the future. So everything that needs to be done is kind of laid out now. Um, I'm almost scared to look at the price. <laughs> I have an idea. It's going to be probably tens of thousands <laughs> to get it all done. But once it's done, then we will be sailing around the world and it will be 
it will be go. It will, everything will be in line um, and it'll just be maintenance from then on. I, I am still working full time and part time and and online for a bunch of different companies, but I make very little. So <laughs> I am hoping that uh, these videos can help sustain me and sustain these projects. And if not, they'll still get done. It's just, it might take a lot longer. I hope that we can get this boat going and I'm super excited at where it is now and, and that I know I can fix everything else that's, that's on board in the next five years, which is the timeline. So it's gonna be a lot of boat work from here until we get these jobs done. So as soon as the boat work gets done, we get to do some sailing in the San Juans and we get to do some cruising in the South Sound, some of my favorite places in the South Sound, um, and maybe even a hop down to uh, Westport. I've always wanted to sail from, uh, sail out of the Sound and down to Westport and spend my first night at sea. And that would just be magical. That would make my life. Um, so, <laughs> Thanks for watching, thank you for supporting, and um, it's moving. The boat is here. It just needs to be worked on and it just needs the parts. All right, thank you, bye.